One percenters, welcome back to 1424 Basketball Training, where the goal is to take 14 minutes, 24 seconds, or one percent of your day to get better. For those that are new, welcome. I'm Coach Tommy. I'm a former psychologist, now a performance enhancement specialist and basketball coach. On this channel, I simplify life and basketball into three buckets, mind, body, and craft. In today's teaching tape, we've got the Nuggets again versus the Pistons for, I don't know, the fourth time probably. So let's see what happens and see what we can do to improve our minds today. First off, let me say thank you to those that are watching. Every one of you guys is helping me get towards my goal of opening a training facility. So thank you for that. If you find these videos helpful in any, in any way, please uh, let me know which way I can go to improve the channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you, guys. Um, so let's go. Um, what do you guys think about my new little background here? I say this to the kids all the time. Don't be a robot. It's the freaking most annoying thing Um that when my players are just so mechanical all day, they're all day, all night long, everywhere they go, they're being told what to do, what to think, how to think. Um, and they just take directions. And, and in basketball and life, if you're waiting for directions, uh, you're going to struggle, man. You, you got to learn how to decide quickly. And, and that's why I think basketball is such a important thing. You got to teach kids the future, how to make decisions on the fly, you know, quick, and uh, make a decision and live with it. You know, if you're a coach out there and you ask your kids to, you know, when, when I say, hey, change jerseys, you pick player A, player B, divide the group into two teams, pick a team. You know, they take forever to divide the team up. And uh, oh, it's so annoying that they're just so afraid to pick, pick an answer. So don't be a robot. MPJ looks like he's back. Jokic with the patented uh, wait for you to come touch me, spin off you. <laughs> it's not about how fast you go, right? It's kind of like that whole rebounding thing. It's not, it's not how high you jump. It's when and where you jump. It's the same thing here. It's like, it's not how fast you are. It's like when and where do you decide to decide to turn on the speed, right? So he's waiting for him to approach. It looks like he's, he's settling in to, you know, post them up and then, Touch me, I spin off you. Don't be a robot. Jaleel Okafor. What the hell? What a bust. He didn't have the mentality to, I don't know, become a stud. <clears throat> Still looks like a solid player moving decently. Boy, did Easier to get open off the ball than on the ball, right? Give it a yoga, and this becomes basically a pick and roll without the, the ball handler here. So he just wheels his way in there. This is why they run a five out. <clears throat> Easier to open and get off the ball than on the ball, right? Way behind the basket now, jumps, gets back in front, uses the left hand. Someone asked me why... Um, why do every team basically run a five out now? It's because of analytics. It's a uh, threes are worth more than twos. <laughs> Started with Mike D'Antoni. He ran the seven seconds or less. He, he talked about getting shots up, getting more possessions up. So threes, you know, and then the, the Warriors made it a little bit better. And then the Rockets took it to another level with, with Daryl Morey. And then they just used computers. And then they started, players started uh, working on threes more. It's, it's a whole list of things and then not to mention the uh, Steph Curry and then changing the rules. So you can't hand check as much because the, the NBA wants the, the game to go up and down because it's more exciting. So there's a lot of reasons why, why coaches have switched to the five out because players got better at threes and that's what the NBA wants. And now that players can shoot threes a lot better, right? Big guys shooting threes. It allows this paint to open up just like that. So that's the way the league is going. And uh, if, if you think, if, if you've watched me plenty of times, right? Things happen in cycles, in waves, in spirals. So um, if I think back, 
Charles Barkley slowed the game down quite a bit. So they made the no backing up for five seconds. <laughs> and then you get Shaq, right? He scared everybody. And then you got Dirk Nowitzki who changed it, right? Shaq dominated the paint. And then you got Dirk Nowitzki, a tall guy is like, screw this. I'm not fighting with Shaq. And then so Dirk Nowitzki started the whole stretch four, big guy shooting threes. And then uh, you couldn't beat Shaq that way. So then they started shooting threes way more. So Dirk Nowitzki kind of started the mold. And then you got uh, LeBron making a super team and the, and the Celtics making a super team. And then you got that kind of era. And then you got Steph Curry and the Warriors figuring out that uh, small ball is okay. And so now everything is small ball. And uh, teams that do the small ball best are going to win. And then you get the transition back where now you got the Lakers figured out that you can use LeBron and AD and uh, Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee going big, completely opposite to break the small ball. So big to, you know, Shaq to Dirk Nowitzki, right? Uh, and then it went to kind of like Steph Curry and, and, and that. And then now it's like, or I mean, it went to like the super team. And then it went to what LeBron and, and, and then Steph Curry and Mike D'Antoni. And then now it's kind of like back to big guys and stuff like that. So it's a cycle, it's a wave. So who knows uh, what'll win, what'll take place, but I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards getting bigs back in the paint until the NBA changes the rules again. <clears throat> Probably going to be an easy win for the Nugs. Get up there, Austin Rivers. Where's Bull Bull? If they're putting in Chan Char, I want to see some Bull Bull. Pistons. Where is uh, Jeremy Grant? He was their best player. So if every if any coach is watching out here and say don't jump to pass, right? You know, that's a a lot of times you actually do got to jump to pass. This is just bad spacing. He's way too close. He should he should be back here so this guy has a, at least a chance to whip it out this way. This dude's right here. I mean, you're invisible. You got to you got to find a better window. Oh, what a pass. Yeah, that was the, the much harder pass. In front of the defender, he could have kicked it or something like that. So it's a much, much harder pass. To me, I mean, the easier pass to me would have been a, a behind the back. But that, that's me. <clears throat> okay, so... Good passers will pass to the person. Great passers will pass the person open. So it looks like Jermichael Green uh, is getting there. Not only do you, do you have to pass them open, right? So instead of passing to, to Jokic, you pass to the open space. And this is the reason why Tom Brady, Drew Brees, they can stay in the NFL longer. They're accurate with their pass. So if you throw it to the space and it's not accurate, you're, you're going to be Tim Tebow. And you're going to throw that thing away or to the other team. Good hands by Jokic to deflect it. It's more football, less basketball. Wait until every player in the NFL looks like, I mean, wait until every player in the NBA looks like Harden, Zion. What if Gronkowski was playing in the NBA, like Tony Gonzalez, Jason Witten, those big... Uh, Travis Kelsey, those big tight ends. What if what if those guys instead of playing football, they decided to play basketball? Oh, the game would be crazy. JaVale McGee, give that man a raise. Oh, 
Who the hell is that? That is. This is like this is like a terrible mechanics, wild and wonky. See this, right? So you can get up shooting this way. Wouldn't wouldn't recommend it long term. All those all those imperfections in your mechanics they add up in the wear and tear you put on your wheels, your tires, your feet. Right, your tires break down way, 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 way faster. <clears throat> What's going on in this game, man? Nothing exciting is going on. Millsap's second arrest, it looks like. <clears throat> So I coach a lot of offense and I, I neglect defense quite a bit because my theory is that if I teach the crap out of offense and that my players know all the offensive tricks, that they'll be smart enough to translate to defense. So as, as you get past the player here, right, they're going to expose the ball. They're going to bring this ball back onto their hip. So you exploit bad offensive players with, with intelligent defense. So when they bring it back down, right, the tendency is to bring this ball back down right here. Then you get ripped. <clears throat> so right there, he gets stripped. And so how do you avoid that? Right, so if you get burned, right, you're not a great defensive player. You just wait for it to come here and you strip it, right? So if you're intelligent enough that to, to realize that he brings the ball back down, you just wait for it to come right there. Offensively, you should bring the ball up. If this guy's on your hip, you got to keep it on your right shoulder. So that's one of the main reasons I don't spend a lot of time on defense. <clears throat> defense is, again, about risk management, communication, and getting players on the same page. <clears throat> so if you're running offensive sets, I mean, you're working your defense when you're working your offense, so. Look at this touch pass. Look at this quick timing, like. Okay, so that's a shovel pass. What's his name here? Howard? He's got a nice little bounce. He's got a little pep to his step. He can shoot. He's 5'11. Oh, he is so quick and decisive. Let's turn it into the Marcellus Howard. Look at this. I'm going to go back. Chanchar, give it up. Look, look, at, look at Howard. Off ball versus on ball. It's very hard to guard a dude off the ball. So he's the receiver. He doesn't get this dribble handoff. He keeps coming, he keeps flowing. This is the guy that I said doesn't move very well, so he's figuring out what the hell's going on. Is he getting it? Is he coming back? Right? Should I double team Jokic? No freaking hesitation. Boom, catch it, all in rhythm. Right? Beautiful footwork. Right? He slows down, chop the feet up like crazy. Here comes the ball, left, right again. <clears throat> He probably would play more if he was a little bit taller because he's probably a defensive liability a little bit. Oh, hesitation, a little quick screen, a little hesitation here. You're behind me. I'm going straight to the rim. I'm going to snake pass. Nobody's actually thinking I'm going into the lane because I'm small. Boom. Left foot takeoff right here. Get past. Glide. All in the right hand. Whew, that boy's fluid. Hezzy. Boom. Take off. One legged jump transformation right here, right? Drop down and drive, pole vault the plant, right? Look at the rotation that he gets on his body. Go check that stuff out if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So look how fluid that looks, man. That's what it looks like when you're 5'11 and you do it real nice. It's not a dunk, but all the same principles apply. I like him. I need to show my uh, little high school kids this guy. Right, all this dribbling for no nothing, right? Give it up, fake like you're gonna go exposed, 
right? This is your Tom Brady. This is your Drew Brees. Boop. Right through there. Watch your foot. Watch your hand. Doesn't matter. Right foot takeoff. Right, quick on the right side. Okay, a lot of a lot of guys probably would have uh, got tried to take another step here. They might have gone right, left, and try to do some floater and, and throw it up here, or maybe right, left, and pass it to here. Right, one foot. This is jumping on the very first foot, turning his body in high off the glass here. Quick off the glass, not high off the glass. Good job, Howard. I like him. <clears throat> it must be resting. Uh, what's his name? Compasso. Two point five. You're all day long. John Char showing me you got a little floater game. But he's not very quick. <laughs> Good job, Howard. I like the hustle. Jokic, I mean, if he's a leader, if he's the leader. This is probably when the Pistons are making their run. God damn these bastards. Got to do everything. Screw you. Let's let's slow this game down. <laughs> Body language, man. Body language, Jokic. Give me that. So again, right here, right? Understanding where the ball pickup point is, right? He's out of control. Yank. This dude just grabbed it out of the air with his right hand. He just squeezed it like a little orange. Hooked him with the left hand and just freaking went right into a left hand hook. <laughs> Jokic is a god, dude. This is um, this is like the dirty stuff that goes on in water polo. Uh, you guys are telling me he's a water polo, polo player. A long time ago, used to date a water polo player. She told me about, you know, they, they didn't shave their legs, so they scratched their girls up. They under, Underneath the water, they would pull them. You know, they would grab their boobs. Um, they would do all kinds of dirty stuff under the water. And I was like, holy crap, this is a savage sport. So, I mean, all these little tricks here. That, that's that's not normal basketball player stuff. So that's why I study these other sports and, and movements and stuff like that. Because look, he already hooked his arm, right? They're worried about this guy on the floor or something like that. He has his arm hooked. <laughs> so he's like, what the hell, ref? I'm getting hooked. They have no idea what the hell just happened. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. So, so when I say offense I always wins, right? Offense has the, the advantage of the one, the rules and creativity, right? Defense has to catch up later. So not until they start catching Jokic, but he, he's already going to, you know, score 10,000 points doing these little tricks. Just like, just like KD used to right here, just to sweep up and get a foul, right? They don't allow that anymore. <laughs> James Harden still does it like a ton, right? And they're trying to get rid of it, but the creators of the game, the, the, the savants, the guys that are in the park creating stuff, right? They're the ones that push the game forward. So the best players, basketball players are not in the NBA, man. They're on the street. They're in the park. <clears throat> Shoot it. Right, whatever they choose is wrong. This guy's passed so many damn times. Yoke, I mean, Okafor is so worried about this cut, right? So he chooses to, to defend the cut and help on the cut. And uh, now that he helped, I mean, his, his person's back. He doesn't recover. <coughs> whatever you choose, you're wrong. Chanchar, man, pass that thing. So... This is that high low again, right? You got you got the teams trying to front Jokic, right? So this becomes a harder pass. Okay, so he's got to lob it, but if this guy can come in and steal it, you don't throw that lob. So this guy's making it a little harder. He's backing off, right? He's thinking lob. 
as soon as this thing swings, you got to lob it to Jokic or expose this man for, for helping. So that's what I would have done. So it's like right there, right? It's, it's already open. It's already open. This side to Jokic, the angle's already there. Or if they're sealing, I mean, this should already be a shot. So Chanchar, a little slow in your reads. You still get the bucket. But I want perfection. Oh, 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 you see the little, see the little spiral there, guys? Oh, right there. Diallo, is that the dude that won the slam dunk contest or was in the slam dunk contest a little while ago? Right, so you're naturally, dude, the dudes that are jumping with, they just move like this, right? You. Okay, I wish that one was up on the on the balls of his foot there. Drop one of these little double helixes. Give me one of those emojis. If you know what I'm talking about. Do it, do it, Austin Rivers. There it is. Oh, <laughs> I thought Austin Rivers was gonna do it. You know, shimmy, his rocker shimmy. This dude is lightning quick. I wonder who who will win a race, Howard or Campasso. Looks like uh, Howard would win this. Campasso is quick, but Howard moves more fluidly. Oh, got him. Got him. You break ankles a lot easier when you don't have the ball. Give it to your freaking hike it to your quarterback. He's looking at the quarterback. Look at how he sets that up. Oh, crap. I'm going the wrong way. John Char, what a dunk. Pick and roll. They all run into Jermichael Green. Oh, crap. I got to guard two guys. All right, instead of standing here, go to the open spot. Pistons making the lug Nuggets look really, really good right now. Okay, so this is like the one-on-one. -on -one. If you have a good offensive guard, Chris Paul, um, Kyrie Irving, you know, this is this is pick and roll basketball. Set a screen, snake it back, put your dude on the hip, see what they do, score. Here he goes. There's a screen. There's the snake. All right, put him on your hip, snake it back. JaVale McGee essentially is a running screen. Okay, there. Now he's walled up this guy. Now he just keeps coming around. JaVale McGee keeps fighting. <clears throat> Oh, JaVale McGee, JaVale McGee. Oh my God, look at that. I should let him run point guard. Go, one, two, three, four. Good balance, Jokic would have fell. Get that man a raise. Sometimes uh, I'll do conditioning with the guys. You got start on the baseline, you got six dribbles to go make a layup, and then it turns into five, and then it turns into four. I mean, JaVale McGee just demonstrated how, how big and athletic these NBA guys are. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go get on a court, start here at the baseline, right? See if you can get to the other end in six dribbles and then five and then four making a layup. It's a... <laughs> Good passes. Another thing that I tell my guys a lot, sometimes two passes is better than one. 
So on the pick and roll here, a lot of young players, a lot of amateur players, a lot of new players. Okay, they're going to try to set this pick and roll. And they're going to wait here. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, this window is open. And they're going to force feed this window. They're going to be like, oh, and they're like, why didn't you roll? Roll faster. Oh, you know, they'll be all pissed. Like, how come you didn't roll? And uh, when the timing is not right, the window may be there, but the timing is wrong. Okay, the timing, the spacing, all those things can be wrong. So sometimes two passes is better than one. So it gets to him. And then as a the play develops, right, the roll guy is now at the right timing. Right now at the right spacing, and then this guy is able to pass it to him. So a lot of times I'll say two two passes is better than one. <clears throat> so that's what I mean. Oh, I thought he was gonna throw that thing. Good restraint, JaVale McGee. No, oh my god, that hurts. I hate when I see shit like that. Oh my god, he, he must be young. Okay, ooh, he could have really, really hurt himself. This this foot, right, his body should fall this way and his foot should rotate in. It shouldn't be out like this. If, if he fell down like this, he would break his knee. Um, good thing he, he rolls this way. So when you roll this way, your body will tuck under you safely. Oh, God, that looks so painful. So you see at the last moment that foot turns in. Oh, and then he flips it out. Oh, I actually didn't even turn fully in. So he flips it out just in time. Jesus Christ. That could have been terrible. Monte Morris. JaVale McGee, told you he, he's so underrated. Before he didn't have this three, four, five years ago. Before he was just a clown. He was, he was like shacked in a fool all day long. Behind the back, bro. You don't see this behind the back this whole time. Right here, dude. Oh. <clears throat> screw this i'm trying to get mine man i'm trying to get mine coach it's the end of the season let me get my minutes oh good luck away See what the scrubs got, right? Eye discipline, manipulation, right? Look, he's he's looking over here, right? This guy jumps. This guy gets wide open. Way to control. Way to control the defenders with your eyes, right? <clears throat> got him, coach. Is, is, is Shaq Harrison really a threat all the way out here? Like right here, is he, is he really a threat? Good Lord. Um, this, this brings up another concept here. When I say offense controls defense, Right, you manipulate a, uh, a defense. So <clears throat> the way you position your body, basketball is all about like nonverbal body language, right? So he looks like he's gonna post. He looks like he's gonna set a screen. He looks like he's not doing anything, but he looks like he's passing, okay? When you're down and the defense starts inching up, like they're aggressive, like he looks like he's not looking to do anything. He takes one dribble back, so it, it looks like he's passive. It looks like Shaq Harrison is passive, okay? But he's obviously not. He's just short, and he's looking for a better angle, right? Okay, it's not there. Oh, my God, I can't freeze it fast enough. 
So three steps. I need to slow this down even more. <clears throat> so he's going to get into this reverse spiral. He's going to be backing into this spiral here. Right there. Okay. And then he repositions his foot and then he's gone. So it looks like he's passive, but he's not right there. Okay, so there's your there's your gun. Okay, hard to see from this side. Okay, that's your gun. And remember when I said elite players kind of disconnect their feet, right? So this is not in a great position. Okay, so it's um, right, left, and then he readjusts his right to get around this guy quicker. Okay. So there's a few videos when I, when I showed you uh, <clears throat> James Harden readjusts his foot on his crossovers. Okay, so it changes your angle. Your ability to be light on your feet and change your foot position is so critical. Some guys will get it intuitively. I'm not sure if Shaq Harrison was taught this or if he's just intuitively really, really good like this. If you're not that intuitive, I mean, this takes a lot of practice and a lot of footwork prep. Okay, so he's backing into a spiral, backing into a gun, boom. All right, so now he's here. All the weight is loaded up here. All right, it was the right foot. Now it's all loaded on the left. And then he repositions again here, boom. Okay, he rotates his whole body. So now it looks like he's, you know, like a little worm, right? Go look at that John Morant stuff I, I, I did. So now he gets around him, right? Look at this angle. This is still a gun, right? This is how he so looks so fast and quick, right? Leaning forward. So, I mean, beautiful, 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 beautiful. And um, I mean, I, I slow that down to, 50% speed. So most of you guys aren't even going to see this in, in real time. Uh, and most of you guys still won't even understand what the hell I mean in, in half speed. Oh, I wish I had this other one. Milliseconds matter. Milliseconds matter for, for the foot placement, the body angles. All these things give you such an advantage. Again here, good offense. I mean, uh, good defense stems from bad offense, right? Give me this stupid idiot. You don't realize that you're coming into three people and you're just going to bump him and you're going to try to out-muzzle him like you've been, you've been hitting the weights real hard. You're trying to punk him, right? I see you have the ball tucked over here, right? But uh, what do you have to do before you shoot it? You got to put it in your second hand. And uh, let me just give this a little love tap here. Give me this shit. <laughs> oh my god and then and then ball placement here right so over this guy so look ball placement protected high pickup and then there's nobody here bobo was smart he he'd be able to smack it right there <clears throat> come on bobo you're in for two seconds couldn't you get a steal Look at him, he's all he's all ready to leave already. All right. I guess I'm on the wrong wrong one, so I don't get stats. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that Jokic got 25 points, 10 rebounds, and eight assists on the light night work. Um, Nuggets fans, I hope you guys get a good draw. Um, we'll see what we do, what happens for the uh, playoffs. I'll, I'll include some breakdowns. What do you guys think? Let me know, man. Don't be a robot or milliseconds matter. Which one sounds better? I'm gonna make some shirts and I'm gonna wear it myself. Um, if you guys want one, sure. I, I don't even know how to sell it to you guys if if, uh, if I wanted to. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I, I'm kind of liking this don't be a robot, but uh, I'll, I might make both, God damn it. All right, guys, until next time, enjoy your weekend. Um, take 14 minutes, 24 seconds, or 1% of your day to get better. Peace.